that either of the two teams had hoped for. The Wardens, Charlie, they go three games and fall short in game three. Sages had a couple of opportunities to uh, turn things around in their set, unable to do so. There should be an intriguing one because I think both teams have a variety of win conditions. Both teams have drafted a relatively standard style of smite composition but they've done so in different ways. Oleron on one side, Chiron on the other. Uh, L.A. Owen loves this Naja pick versus the big dash in burst damage uh, from someone like the Pele. Mindsets clashing here in game one. Yeah, should be interesting start wise. Really nothing out of the ordinary, except it looks like Slash might actually start that Prophetic Cloak first item as opposed to, you know, any other of the starts that we've seen so far in Soul Lane. So I'm curious how long he's going to sit on 15 stacks and try and chase down the magical characters for the rest of the game. But the earlier you get it online, the more you can actually use that, that upgraded cloak later on, which everyone is just complaining about how tanky you can actually become if you get that cloak stacked up. I'm trying to think, maybe this is just showing how, because uh, we've seen a lot of the mitigation build, right? Starts just like this for, for Remikami, uh, Soul Eater, more mitigations a bit later on. Trying to think how much axe we've seen. This I mean, guy's backing. Yeah, I know he's got to. He took way too much damage. <laughs> got to head back. That's okay. We got that speed. was not a good pull. No, we get back to lane a little bit faster, but definitely a tough pull for for LA on right off the rip. That's gonna actually give Short Fuse uh, the opportunity to to move mid, maybe assist in pushing out that wave. LA on heads on over to speed buff on the left side of the map. You know, I don't know if the fallout's gonna be absurd from that start, but clearly not an ideal start for the Kalen Wardens. The, uh, look, that guy swings. Those buffs, you group them all up with one another? I mean, the... It's high threat. I suppose. It, to me, it looked like Slash wanted to... I don't know, maybe because... Here's the thing. When you don't know where your jungler is early on, I, I assume no one on the Sages No, said, that's early on. Right. <laughs> oh, you said early on. Got yeah, it. early on. I assume no one on the Sages was like, <laughs> oh, he took, he took too much damage. He right. probably retreated. They, they were like, hey, we have no eyes on jungle. He could be cringe ganking back up. That was the call. So... Leon's able to go back, full health, go to his speed, and then make for the rotation in mid. Gets get Jengaru's beads down. And it looks like he's going to lose any farm for it. So it ends up not costing Battery. him in the slightest. <laughs> but it could have if you get to see Joshi gets aggressed upon right. by Short Fuse while there's no jungler to help him out. That's pretty right. much the only negative that could have occurred from that. Oh, Leon remains aggressive. Throws a sash towards Short Fuse. So that neutral farm in mid will go towards the Calvin Wardens. The question usually is, all right, you get big wind fire wheels, you drop your target down, what's there for follow-up? There should be some good burst damage, Trelly, from Joshi, from Chiron, especially later on in the game, some snipes hit. Detonate a bit of that damage. It's not the traditional big burst ability on the other side, but follow-up follow -up, I imagine will, will be okay. 
uh, if El Rayon is able to find those priority targets. Yeah, should be able to, especially if the, it's one of these squishier targets with beads, or with beads down, I should say. So Dengar is going to have to play pretty safe here in the mid lane for the next 100 seconds. It looks like a possible attempt at a blue buff invade, but here too early, and with that back and the instant teleport from Ramakami, not going to feel too bad about fighting for your blue buff, especially if Shortfuse is able to make that rotation over, which it looks like we might see a little bit of a scrap towards that blue buff. But with the teleport in, it doesn't seem like a fight that Leon really wants to take. So no. probably just getting their own blue buff or just send it. That seems to be the call. Yeah, Leon, it's the, the style of game he likes to play. Sash, no good on a short fuse, but Slash is here. Blue buff oh, looks like dropped it. by Slash at the Callan Warden. So a small win on the back end of what was a medium-sized win, getting the beads off Jankaru early. So Leon has remained active, and good things seem to follow. But now a return invade by the Sages. Leon left running, and it's going to be the exact same scenario. Blue pulled back between the Tier wow. 1, Tier 2, and the same outcome. Callan Wardens go two for two on blue buffs on the right. And they got the movement speed from Chester. They could have chased him down so easily, but huh? they decided. Is that the real name? Well, no, it's called it's called the, ro <laughs> the Rogue Chest, but I call him Chester. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> That is good. That is good by you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you get <laughs> <laughs> why is that so funny to me? Oh my god, it's too on the nose. It, it works on multiple levels. Yeah, no, it's good. All right, Chester, it is Trelly. You and, got it. And he gets the movement speed buff. So they from Chester. From Chester, they could have chased him down, but they decided not to. And that's that's what's fun about that chest is that it can spawn anywhere on the map and you can use it to your advantage. In this case, over on blue. Right. One of those situations where if they actually wanted to fight, it would have been great, but they just decided to get bl both blue buffs and back off, and that works in their favor. Ooh, slash. Did have ult, so if that shielding was necessary, would have had uh, Sentinel of Zeus. So it's already been pretty proactive from LA on. You got short fuse on the Pele though, Trelly. Still waiting to finish up that first item. That'll be a big power spike out of the jungle for the Athenian Sages. Could be some options for, for ganks there. Where Leon continues to put that pressure, though, is what I'm curious about. It seems like Privative and Wowie. You got a Ymir, you got an Olorun. You realize you need a couple of rings to start building up in that lane. Tubo okay to just sit and chill and let <laughs> some of the minions. Tubo's just sightseeing. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of good stuff. Look at that. Look at, look at the... You're telling me I can't just gallop and, and kick it on the sand? Just I would like to vacation there. Right. They've got the, the ships. There's not no, not a threat in the world. Wowie shows up. He's down to just sightsee with you. Just no gods one smacking each other around 10 feet from the beach. Dudes being bros. <laughs> not, no no fighting world. That's right. Until it, the junglers show up, they're just going to sit there peacefully. Airbnbs <laughs> at, like, hyper discounted rates because of, of – <laughs> violence the nearby violence, or yeah. whatever. Go right. Gods may be fighting for Yeah, this is good. For whatever they need. We're on a really good clip here uh, earlier. I mean, there, there's <laughs> been zero one. fighting besides this blue buff. That's right, here we go. Another maybe. one, except it gets picked up by the Athenian Sages. Just fine. This is a 3v1, though. Oceans has ultimate. Remakami stunned, taken up to the sky by El Leon. Where's the follow-up? It's right with Oceans, who sends Remakami to the side with the Salmon Leap. Though extends the fight, it's simply not enough. Short Fuse is going to get jumped on as well. And how about the rotation from Joshi over from mid? That'll be a simple kill for him. And good team play from the Callan Wardens. Left Tuba alone in this lane. Wow. Tuba is just fine. Then it pays off. That's so unfortunate because Priv has been sitting at this purple buff spawn waiting, trying to get something out of losing two over on the right side of the map. Just missed that purple buff spawn. Tuba is going to be able to confirm the own, their own buff. And that's just all wins for the side of the Kowloon Wardens. Gold hasn't changed too much because of it. Just going to be that small bit of gold going into the pockets kill-wise. 500, you're not too upset about it. You just want to make sure now, probably send some, some teammates over towards that blue buff next time it spawns in because the Kowloon Wardens are not hiding this, no. this strat. And then the three, four, all the way over to blue buff this early on. And they've been on pretty much every rotation of that buff. I'm thinking wards on the right side of the map or Instead, just say short fuse, hey, give that blue buff up. Let's go over to left. Let's look towards mid. There's other options. I just know that Remakami's hurting for a little bit of XP at the moment, despite being up a level yep. to slash. Just 500 lead for the Wardens, but it was about a 1,000 swing. The Sages were uh, were 500 or so ahead prior to that fight over on right. Went to proactivity from Oceans, though. Goes into Prophetic Cloak early, where Privative Trelly instead has gone towards Thieves. 
when we talk about, you know, we're, we're early here in year 10. We talk about tournament metas unfolding and theory, crafty on, theory crafting ongoing as the, the weekend goes on. Have seen different priorities from the supports. We've seen some immediately go into Prophetic, as Oceans is doing here. We've seen Thebes still remain that first item slot. Gets you to a similar spot eventually. Uh, but maybe Ocean's prioritizing building up some of the more difficult to come by stacks. Yeah, it looks like the, the Wardens have definitely changed up. Focusing out double cloaks, as you said, in the tablet. My own still going towards that breastplate of regrowth. And wouldn't you know it, blue buff spawning in. This time, Priv and Jengaru show up at the party. They say, hey, we're not letting you bully our soul laner anymore. And they actually are poised to fight this. Remakami, so much farm, and here comes the old promotions. Ocean sends Remakami around, but how about a double freeze into a triple knockup from the Sages? That'll do just fine for initiation. But there's simply not enough damage this early in the game from either team, so this one gonna last a bit longer. Shell needed, and LAO turns the tables on short fuse. And the result, one less kill, but still a kill for the Kalen Wardens on a blue buff invade on right. Yeah, that was a clutch shell from Oceans. I think that Short Fuse had plenty of damage to try and return there. It's By all accounts, it seemed like a fight that the Athenian Sages were ready to have. They had a bit of a XP lead, as I said, from Ramakami, despite the, the constant ganks over the right side of the map. This Kakolan was sitting just fine because of the way Slash has decided to build. The Cloak, the Warriors actually are not getting as many last hits on your wave. So just gold-wise was not sitting okay. But then the rotations came through, and the Sages have started to win that fight. It just took a little bit too long and maybe overstayed their welcome. Leon living that long and getting the shell from Oceans is able to net another kill off of that invade. Well, the question's then got to be, why right side? What are the Kalen Wardens, in your mind, Charlie, seeing over on right that makes that the obvious choice? Are you slowing down Remakami, or do you just feel like that's where your advantage is in the first 10 minutes? Uh, I'm seeing a Soul Eater Kakolin with Sigil. You know what happens once Sigil hits level 20. You don't want to let Kakolin just fast track towards that upgrade, so put some pressure over there. And it seems like Leon just really favors this side of the map. When you look over on the other side, you see an Oleron who's just going to make you in slow motion. The second you get over there, no beads available. So you're, you're picking left to right, and Leon decided on right. It's been working out so far. But now the Sages are able to climb ahead goal wise, despite yep. being down 0 3. Just by quicker farm, and I think also the fact that wow, he's gone untouched, he's been able to collect those gilded unscathed. stats consistently. He's gone unscathed for sure. <laughs> bow, bow down to your kings, maybe? <laughs> maybe. Maybe throughout the course of this year. We'll see what the Camelot Kings do during the SPL regular season. Over the course of the next few days, we're going to find out which two teams from this event will be joining your reigning world champions in the SPL. Speaking of wowie here, Trelly, again, as far as item priority, I think there's sort of guidelines that we've seen over the course of the weekend, but some individual items shifting up in order. A lot of the times from these Magic Lady Cs, we'll see like a Telkines into Demonic. Cyclopean Ring drew a lot of eyes when it first was, was out in game. Has maybe slowed down in priority a bit. Spear of the Magus, you get percent pen. A little life steal early in this build for Wowie. Does so the timing feel correct as El Leon will miss the Sash? Oceans, though, here has Whirlwind of Rage and Steel. Won't use it. And just some damage trade in mid. Uh, you know, traditionally, you think percent pen feels great later on in the game when all that magical defense is built up. Is the timing still okay from Wowie? Yeah, it seems like the, the synergy between Typhons and Spear of the Magus is what all of these magical ADCs keep leaning on. So whichever one you want to get first, in this case, the proc of Spear of the Magus helps you out when you're actually boxing up against a physical ADC. Oleron should just be bowling out this lane. Wow, he's been able to take most of the neutral farm. Hasn't been able to go too far up towards those purple buff invades, but I think Tuba respects the amount of sustain and damage that this Oleron can do. As we see, maybe Priv's in some danger here. Has to ult early, which means no Man. pullback for this one. That stinks for Priv. Priv hits another two-man freeze, and it's Leon on a killing spree. After what looked like an okay bit of disengage from the Athenian Sage's support. Now it's a Windfire Wheels onto Short Fuse. Can't really afford to die here. Already falling a bit behind. Beautiful ult. Wow, he uses the Sanctified Field. Joshi just escaping out on the other side. And that's both relics down from the Ola Run. And Tuba's got the fade away. Cal and Wardens, they are simply taking the fight to the Sages on every corner of this map. Joshi didn't get the memo to escape. And death will be his escape. Athenian Sages trade out one, but 
Still good team play from the Callan Wardens. Yeah, definitely a great teleport in from Ramakami to make sure they get something off of that fight. But as you said, unfortunately for Priv, gets a little bit caught out of position. Ymir often does. If you're going to step up that far and your team just bails, you don't have that luxury of being able to just run away. And a good ult from Leon. It's not going to net the kill onto Short Fuse this time around, but was able to provide plenty of chase down. And, and I thought that, wow, he had a fantastic ult. I mean, Leon does not have beads, so you're, you're getting slowed for the entirety of that ult. But not enough damage and not enough follow-up from the rest of the squad. The Wardens are going to get the better end of that trade and finally push them ahead in the gold department. Still not by much, yeah, though. Yeah, not I mean, by much. The farming that the Sages have been able to do is keeping them right here neck and neck. You're going to see a bit of a deficit in the jungle. But besides that, I think most of these lanes have been sitting just fine despite sitting down 5-1. to one. They still, I mean, Wowie got, got crushed in that last fight. But still output some good damage. Sanctified field, Charlie, that, that's always something that you have to look at with, with Olorun. I mean, it's even if not in the meta, even if Magic Lady carries not in the strongest spot, it, it is such a high potential ultimate. Oh, yeah. That, that there's always a threat of a random Olorun pick totally wrecking your game plan because it, it, it just feels so terrible to fight into that. And the Calvin Wardens they don't have a lot to get out of it. Not just yet, at least. Leon chasing down Priv, and it's going to be another Windfire Wheels. This time onto the support. Another Whirlwind of Rage and Steel. It's onto two, though. Oceans gets the kill onto Priv. Short Fuse trying to chase down the Shing Chen, but it's a double instead. And from the brink, Oceans flips it. Two kills for himself. But what can you do now, right? The gold hasn't expanded off of these kills. This is where the Kalan Wardens can make up some ground. Yeah, I would think immediate pull or just back retreat and see if you can group up. You got two dead. Short Fuse is gone for another 10. Maybe you're grouping towards Gold Fury. The issue with Blue Stone Chiron is you're not really burning it that quickly, and you don't have that much safe burst either. So looks like just taking these smart fights, Leon. Uses that movement speed from Breastplate of Regrowth, throws the ring toss, and is able to run circles around Priv. Ymir, that freeze can be very potent if you're at a distance, but the cone gets larger as it goes out, so pretty easy to juke. Just like oh that, man. just walking in Does a circle. Does it again. Yep. Leon styling on Priv right now. Should be another one. This one for Tuba. Now Wowie's going to get chased down. Has beads in Aegis. Had to use the Sanctified Field, though. And that's a lot of team fight now missing from the left. Callan Warden's already grouped. They're going to consider a Gold Fury pull here. Athenian Sages may be smart. They're not going to try to contest the Gold Fury. They're going to send a couple onto the Pyromancer, but Slash is there. So the Sages won't even get the Pyromancer. Slash instead actually fighting in a 2v1, forces the ultimate away from Short Fuse. Troy, you just got to look at kill participation right now. Eight of eight for Leon, who's been everywhere. Seven of eight for Joshi, as they fought around this team at effectively eight of eight. For Oceans as well. Set up a knockdown by the initiators of the Callan Wardens. And I'm loving this because when, when me and J-Mac were casting the earlier Warden set, I took a look at the way Oceans was playing and the way that he was building and it was not adding up. I was like, this man plays a, such an aggressive brand of Smite. He's constantly flopping in with Bacchus. He's looking for Poke. Why is he not going Cloak? This time around he has went for the Cloak. I believe that's a 17 stacks. He's been constantly getting involved. He's been constantly getting active. I love this switch up. It, it's going to make him tankier in the late game. And also, you get value from playing as aggressive as he has. It's only going to get more difficult for the Sages to mount a comeback here. The gold lead still not incredible. It, it's been a slow burn, a slow build up. Only about 3K so far. It's healthy. But but it, it it's it's starting to grow. Right. And I think that's what makes the Sages start to worry. We've seen Remakami rotate out a little bit earlier. And they probably want to. And I'm thinking it's probably time Jangaru gets a little bit more involved in these team fights, trying to help out or appeal with damage because Merlin so far is the only one who's seeing that they can actually help out in, these, in the damage department. Yeah, Slash is in a good spot as well. Not only 17 stacks on the cloak for, for Ocean, 17 on the cloak for Slash. I imagine all physical. Hefty, no, 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 hefty amount of physical. Two, two right? magical two stacks magical total. Two stacks on that, all, all 15, then maybe in the physical department. But – that's, that's sort of the interesting pivot. You itemize into that early. Now you're well underway. Get a glad shield. Only Hunter's Garb. I mean, you don't have the sigil start, but you're still in a really strong spot if you're Slash. Now, Remakami hasn't fallen behind. In fact, ahead in XP, so you're going to need this Kulkullen to flex those muscles a bit by the time the next fight starts out. 
Never a good sign when the opposing soul laner is proxying out a wave. But look at the way the Wardens continue to play here, Trelly. It's just LA own, followed by Oceans, Wind Fire Wheels, into Whirlwind of Rage and Steel, and there's just no reaction time for the Athenian Sages. Trying to catch out the Kalan Wardens, maybe. But the Wardens able to take a expedition into the Sages' side of the jungle and back away. Yeah, it's still we're still not in Fire Giant territory just yet. No one's builds are really showing that they could do it quickly enough. But given enough space, it's possible. I think a dive here on a Ramakami is not the call either. They're, they're, yeah, this is going to be a tower and just going to let Ramakami continue farming. It would take a while to kill. But now the tower is gone. They've got plenty of time. I mean, they just do both. Yeah, they, they, you've got a solid two minutes to chase him down before anyone else from the Sages show up. And it looks like too close to the Tier 2 tower. They are going to call that one off. Point is, though, that Oni Fury will spawn in shortly. The Pyromancer will spawn in. Until then, the Wardens are just running around seeing what they can get down. And... Maybe this time Ramakami actually overstayed the welcome because the rest of the Wardens are on the way. Yeah, it's Sash into Windfire Wheels. I bet there's a Whirlwind of Rage and Steel somewhere around the corner. CC Immunity from Ramakami buys time and by space. But Elion, he's got the gap close. Then another one for the jungler of the Kalin Wardens. Still nine of nine affected kills for both jungle and support. And eight of nine for Joshi. It's just been a roaming... Three-man death ball. It's taken fights to Slash. It's taken fights to Tuba. And it's really been brutal for Short Fuse and Priv, who have both dropped a couple of times. Priv with no beads early in the game. Been uh, been jumped on a lot. Good news is, though, for the Athenian Sages, wow, he has been able to sit back, farm up in that lane, finish up Demonic Grip, opens up the tower. This all run still very threatening here at the 19-minute mark. It certainly can be, especially if paired with Jengar, that Demonic Grip is going to make sure that you're shredding prots for your your other magical characters. Priv will also get a bit of a benefit, I suppose, yep. but more so just support. And now that Oni Fury has spawned in, we're seeing a full five-man grouping here as Leon sort of lurks on the right side of the map, maybe looking to see if he can take anyone up. Could be a bait, but I think this Fury would go down for free. Who are they going to be able to find, though? This time it's Priv, and oh, I don't man. imagine you want to waste ult on that. Priv uses the freeze, but Leon, he's got to use Windfire Wheels to get out. Opening kill, that's Joshi. Onto the Emir, short fuse, uninterested. And continuing this fight. Has a bubble. There's plenty of CC to uh, to pop it from the Catlin Warden side of things. These are the types of fights, though. The, the Sages have to pick this perfectly. I mean, you're down by almost 4,000 gold. Not game ending yet. You lose a handy enough fight around an Oni Fury at 19 minutes. And the Wardens play clean enough from then on out. It is effectively a game ending type fight. So picking and choosing what you're willing to give up here. Might just change the face of this game in its entirety if you're the Sages. Yeah, no doubt. I think that if the Sages got wiped or dropped three, the Wardens just beeline for Fire Giant at that point. We are at that, that stage of the game where it's certainly possible. But still, the Sages have been walking up. They were able to find good damage. It's just Priv cannot stand alone. Where's where's Ramakami with the blink ult? And it looks like we might oh, be able to find great. it here. That's great from Slash. Jumps in. Oceans on a Whirlwind of Rage and Steel. Actually now has to get out on his own. Short Fuse. Has the gap close and a nice knock up on the other side as well. Remakami still chasing down the back. And it's LA on, on a rampage. As Big Slash push. sends three back. But Tuba's got to leave. The damage dealers just cannot stay in this fight. But maybe Joshi still has something to say about it. Slash leaps up and away. The health bar so low. And LA on, on the miraculous ring toss keeps the Sages at bay. Yeah, that was some juke juice there from Tuba. And it looks like low health bars throughout. Everyone's going back to base. Short Fuse and Oceans, both dead. Oceans will be up a little bit sooner, but still, looks like a full-on reset here for both of these teams. The Sages are fighting back pretty well for how much XP-wise they are down. I mean, Short Fuse is level 16. That's two levels to lay on, and Priv is sitting two levels down as well. Everyone else is trying to deal with that deficit, and they're stepping up and fighting just fine for the time being, but some power spikes come through. Leon finishes Heartseeker. That's going to really up the damage of this Naja, and it looks like Tuba probably pretty close, finishing that Bluestone brooch and also working on a Heartseeker of their own. It, it, they're just scaling here, are the Wardens. As long as the Sages are okay with stalling, they're actually going to go over towards the Pyromancer, maybe just trying to trade these objectives. So the Catlin Wardens immediately then pull the Oni Fury, which they will. Slash. A chance to steal away the Pyromancer. Doesn't steal it away. Makes life uncomfortable, though. Now a runic bomb for both teams. Both junglers possessing one. Oni Fury will be an afterthought here for the Kalan Wardens. 
Both teams pick one up. Ramakami does end up going into Prophetic. A couple items after when Slash did. Already eight stacks built up, though. And so this uh, this Kokulin, in just the course of a couple of team fights, has been able to add up quite nicely on the Prophetic Cloak while getting the benefit of the Soul Eater and the Glad Shield. Maybe only Hunter's Garb after the fact there as well. It's quite a 4,000 gold lead or so, Trelly. Callan Wardens, who have been controlling most things and still will consider themselves in the driver's seat. And last fight. You know, one for one trade. Search stages were low. Callan Wardens couldn't finish it off. Still a lot up for grabs in the first game. And you know what? I, I talked a bit about how I think the, the narrow corridors of this map sort of made Merc a little bit worse. And I, I guess something I didn't consider is how it makes Nike better. We saw Slash completely yeah, cut off a, a whole jungle right. path and just push everyone <laughs> towards the team at that point. Tier 1 tower being looked at, and it looks like we'll go go down pretty freely as Priv takes a little bit of poke there, and Leon actually wanted to see if they could find the Ymir with that Sash. Maybe wants to run away at this point. The rest of the team wants to head on back to base and maybe finish up some items. Level 20 coming soon for a lot of these carries. It does look like Joshi was able to upgrade that Pendulum of Ages as well. Yep. But now the Sages are trying to step up, see if they can grab a Tier 1 tower before the rest of the team returns. That teleport might just call it off. Slash teleports back through. Gets Spirit Robe. Mitigation build just Missing that final piece. I mean, Nike hard enough to kill off anyway. Now you're going to have a shield, but there's a Sunder pickup for Privative. We wondered if that's been the answer. Doubly effective up against the Nike. This damage from Leon and the rest of the Kalen Wardens. It's too much for Remakami, who will transform. It doesn't stick around. Short Fuse takes the Sash and ults oh. away. Was close. Slash has Blink, has Sentinel Azus. Will use neither. Wonder what the call is now for the Catalan Wardens. You've TKO'd the solo and the jungle for the Sages, and just tier two is the call. All right, I like this. I was going to say, if just Joshi goes back, what's the rest of the team going to do? They will all retreat together as the Athenian Sages walk up, maybe trying to get some last-minute vision down towards this Fire Giant. They could go for an attempt at just seeing if they can set up some vision, but there's no way they could go for a pull this early in the game with those builds. The Catalan Wardens, however, a great team fight. If Tuba has, like, one more item finish there, Short Fuse definitely goes down, and maybe Ramakami drops as well. But it looks like the final grouping towards this Fire Giant. Some good positioning here for the carries of the Sages. And Privet's going to back up. At least, at the very least, the team knows exactly what's yep. going on here. How they're going to find their way in is the question. Well, on the narrow corridors, they also feel good for Ymir. You can set up a wall, block off a lot of the members of the Cowan Wardens. But there's a Phantom Shell for that. Oceans leaps back forward. Privet at low, but he definitely doesn't have the damage to get the kill onto the Ymir. Sanctified field drapes over just about everyone of the Kalen Wardens who will back away as Remakami will be sashed once again by El Leon. We have seen this story all game long. One more roar. The ring toss won't connect. Bit of poke damage has really been making life difficult for the Sages. It certainly is, but that means you lost a lot of your ultimates and a fair bit of relics. The Kalen Wardens are going to full-on retreat there. I was curious if they were going to try and go for a pull just because the Sages were also down, but this is only a 6, 5k gold lead of that. It's not end all, be all. We can just pull the fire giant right. in front of you territory. You still have to cross your T's, dot your I's. And more specifically, Leon has to find these clutch ultimates. Last time, it was able to grab the beads there from Jangaru. I'm thinking that could be the target here, but Short Fuse also missing beads. I mean, pretty much anyone could be taken up at this point. You just got to watch out for the amount of damage that can be returned to you when you're landing back into that damage. They got double Chester going as well with the Bracer buff, so they could be zooming through this fire drive. Uh -huh. Beads still there for the Callan Wardens. That's important to look at going into this fight. Slash, oh no! Might be in trouble here, and he is. It's Wowie who deals the killing blow. That's where your Ymir pays off, but now you gotta disengage because Tuba's got to. The triple for the Chiron who gallops into game number one, and now it's a doubling back. For the Kalen Wardens, they will gather around the FG, and they've got the burn. Beautiful wall there from Priv, but not enough to keep the rest of the team alive. Triple kill for Tuba, sitting 5-0. and oh, And now the Fire Giant goes down for absolute free. Remakami would be the only one who could teleport in, and he's dead for 30 seconds. So now probably time to grab Fire, grab the Pyromancer. I wouldn't be surprised if Leon books it over to Primal Fury just to make sure that no one else can get farm on this map. He does not want the enemy team to get another leg up in this team fight. 
they're just going to sit back for a bit. They've got a solid 10k goldie by the time they grab all this, and they haven't even grabbed those towers just yet. It's going to really start to add up fast. The damage numbers as well. Top of the charts, the, the Naja, these ring tosses in the jungle have been consistent, and they've got plenty of gold in hand to spend up. Short Fuse has had a real tough game this game. I mean, the Pele just has not been able, in my eyes, to find that back on. You're talking about damage dealt differences. And, and, you know, that's – you can only glean so much from that. But LAL and up top, you had like 23,000, something like that. Short Fuse a bit lower down, just above the supports, 9,000 or so. Everyone on the Callan Wardens uh, feeling comfortable in a lot of their poke damage. Tuba – I think it's really started to be effective in these last couple of fights as well. Five or so thousand damage ahead of Wow, it's really the mid lane battle, the only one that's that's particularly close right now where you expect a Merlin to feel good. Five thousand more damage out of Solo. A gold lead has helped with that, but the jump in is followed up by a lot of burst and a lot of poke from the Callan Wardens on cooldown. Now this is where life gets awkward, Chili. We've talked about the four minute buff with the four minute respawn on Fire Giant. I wonder if that forces teams on defense to, to make plays because you're forced to extend out immediately if you want to contest the next fire. Yeah, it certainly could be the call. Um, if I'm Priv, Wowie, and Jengaru, I'm staying as far away from Oceans and Slash as I can at this point. They are very close to finishing up those stacks. And when they do, the front line that has been giving them so much trouble will get even more annoying once those cloaks evolve. Just try to do as much damage as you can from the back of the team fight and keep your birds alive. It will be a full-on reset, though. Primal Fury goes down, and the Wardens get to group, spend up the last of their gold, and decide, do they want to go in and try and break the base, or are they setting up for another Fire Giant fight, this time Enhanced Fire Giant, before they go for the, the full-end attempt? Doesn't mean that the Sages haven't hit their power spikes as well. I think once Ramakami gets that sigil of the Old Guard online as Kakolin, gets much more annoying. You can see that, wow, we finally got that Diamond Arrow, so some extra auto attack damage there for this Oleron. We've already seen some very clutch sanctified fields. The ultimates have been hitting. It's just not enough follow-up just yet. Yep. And Jangaru has been positioning quite well. Still sitting 0-0-3. Hasn't died yet this game. The Merlin is able to do plenty of damage if the team fight, if the, if the tanks are allowed to, to set up for it. And it looks like the Remakami actually did get that upgrade. So we'll see a true tanky Kakolin trying to dive this back line once the Phoenix Siege begins. Also, new Sundering Axe feels really good. Oh, I yeah. think Slash getting that upgrade. Uh, you're going to jump in and get a little extra, little extra burst off the top. I mean, the 3% of their health is fine, and then plus 2% of uh, your protection from items, especially when you've gone tanky, should feel pretty good. Gets procced maybe on short fuse just now, and, and a little bit of chunk there. So it's a 3-2 split. Callan Warden send a couple towards mid, three towards left. Shortview's desperately hoping to make an impact later in the game here. Same with Wowie. Especially now, you're almost full build on this overrun. Sanctified Field has been good for disengaging Trelly, but but rarely have seen it used to lock down the targets of the Callan Wardens. Oh, no. Primitive steps forward. And this is, this is what we talk about with some of the awkward moments towards the end of the Fire Giant. The buff's about to wear off. Priv wondering if you can step up and find ward coverage. And now it's a mistake. That might just end the game. Wowie! Use his ult, but it's not enough against Tuba. Short Fuse wow. desperately running away, and a double kill from Joshi. And this game has slowly gotten out of control. Unfortunately, El Leon will not keep 100% kill participation alive. It'll be 16 out of 17 at least. You won't lose any more of that percentage as one more goes up to the sky. Another kill under Ramakami around the corner. It won't make it. And the Callan Wardens, a clean game one win. You couldn't have set that one up better. The, the Fire Giant buff is going out. It looks like the Wardens are retreating. Priv walks up to check the jungle, maybe get some wards down. The rest of the team says, oh, wait, we're actually not retreating. We're going to get this yep. pick. Then we're going to run it through mid and end the game. It's you, you got to change up your mindset once you know that Fire Giant's going to be respawning. Could the Sages have even... You know, it's life refactor.